Knowing which colours to choose when doing portraits with colour pencils could be a real, real minefield. Today I'm going to simplify that for you and we're going to break down each type of skin tone and what colours you need to create them as realistically as possible. <music> Hi guys welcome back to my channel it's Benita from Benita Doodles and as mentioned in the beginning of the video today I'm going to break down six type of skin tones and the colours involved in using them to get as much of a realistic skin tone as we can. I have tried to limit the pencils that we use so I don't overwhelm you with the colour choices. They are the colours that I choose to use when I do my own personal portraits and if you've been following my live tutorial on skin tones where I've been drawing my daughter again you'll see that I've been using the same pencils that I'll be showing you in today's tutorial. Very quickly, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the bell button for the all notifications and you'll be notified every time a new video goes up. And I also go live every Wednesday where we do full real time talk throughs and tutorials that gives you a bit more of an insider info. So we're starting on the light flesh here and we are using ivory, light flesh, cinnamon, light red violet, cup at mortem and walnut brown. Now the reason why you see the blue there is depending on the undertone which will depend on your reference sometimes you may need to use the blue rather than the light red violet blue and the violet sort of indicates where the thinnest part of your skin tones are under the eyes in your vein areas um, wrists where, where the, your skin is thinnest because our veins are blue so you can see that through your skin tone all you need to do is make sure that you start from your light and work up to your dark and each time you do gentle layers in an oval formation again if you check back and look at the live feed i show you exactly how to do the formation of your ovals because it helps give you a much smoother finish with your pencil make sure your pencils are sharp as that also helps i've been a bit naughty through here and kept some of my blunt so don't monkey see monkey do and just make sure that you sharpen your pencils again just as we've got here we've got about six or seven colors going on so you work from your top down to your bottom you get your six levels on and then you go through and you carry on doing it in the same method so each time you work up on your levels you're blending your colors over and over and over and that gives you the smooth transition between your highlights and your shadow areas we are now doing the medium and um, that is the light flesh, cinnamon, medium flesh, light red violet and again if you need the blue undertone the light ultramarine and we're also using the Van Dyke brown for the shadows. The Van Dyke brown is essentially removing any red from the shadows because we don't want to add any more as it's already quite a pinky flesh tone anyway. The Van Dyke brown helps to just counteract that a little bit because we don't want to be going any redder in our shadows, we just need to be going darker. Again layering through using nice oval motions, it's easier to go in ovals than it is to go straight up and down because you get a much smoother transition on your pencil and you tend to get less pencil lines and it makes it much easier to blend when it comes to it. Moving on to the olive now, which is the same skin tone as myself and my daughter. We will be using the cinnamon, the light flesh, ivory, light red violet, warm grey three and the new girl. You may also find that a green pops up on your screen, which is the May green. And that again depends on your reference. Olive skin generally has green to yellow undertones and the way we get the green inverted commas without using your green is to use things like warm grey and I quite often use greys underneath skin tones because it eliminates some of the yellowing that you can get from the standard flesh tones and the ivory tones. The warm greys are also very good for doing the thinner areas of the skin but again it is all down to your reference that is what is going to determine which colours you are going to be using at the end of the day. I will show you on here in just a second what it looks like when you apply that slightly greener undertone over the olive skin as it does change it quite dramatically. So really really look at your reference and you'll know exactly the types of colours that you need. 
the tanned has a very very yellow or orangey undertone if you are like me and from the uk you may remember the much loved you've been tangoed adverts and that would be quite often banded about for people that used fake tans because they were very very yellow or very orange i should say so what we've done to eliminate that is we've brought colors in like dark sepia so the main colors for the tanned are the light flesh cinnamon van dyke brown nougat dark sepia and the brown uh, burnt ochre apologies is what gives us our orange undertones without it looking like a sun the dark sepia also eliminates too much of the red and the orange tone so when we go into our shadows they look a lot more natural than they would if we were to be applying things like the caput mortem which has much more of a redder color to it the Van Dyke Brown also helps eliminate that, but it keeps the tones warm without it losing any of its shading. And I did this specifically with the yellow undertone, which is why we use the Burnt Ochre, but again, always check your reference. The dark is a warm undertone, and we are using Cinnamon, Burnt Ochre, Nougat, 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 I don't actually know how you pronounce it. Caput Mortem, Light Red Violet and Dark Sepia. Again, our Nougat Dark Sepia are the two colours that help reduce any redness down as we appear to go into our shadows. If we end up using the same tones but just darker versions, you just end up with a very bland, flat colour. The importance of using a variation in colour is that it gives you a much more natural look and it gives you a much more 3D look. Again just blending through each layer using the oval motions it gives you a much more smoother finish. Now of course it's much more difficult seeing it in place when we're just doing it in circles like this so it's really worth maybe just sketching out some very basic shapes of faces, hands, even arms just so you can practice these skin tones and where those shadows will fall and where the highlights hit. We're now moving on to the very dark slash black and we've done this with albeit we're using greys we are doing it with a warm undertone so we're using warm grey 3, warm gay, warm grey 5, nougat, van dyke brown, Payne's grey and dark sepia. Now this is probably one of the trickier ones to do and you really do need to look at your reference when doing this type of skin tone because it will vary an awful lot. Uh, I, as I say, I've gone for the warm undertone. With the cold, you would be probably using things like the dark indigo. Again, layering through between your lightest to your darkest. The Payne's Grey and the Dark Sepia, again, eliminate some of the redness that you get from the Van Dyke Brown. The Nougat just adds a little hint of orange tone, which again, when you're under a nice warm sun, you're going to get the richness. Just keep making sure that you're smoothing and layering as you go, and you can see the difference that that Payne's Grey has made in that shadow area. Much more realistic skin tone, so it's um, worth sort of really observing and checking out where you need to use which colours. Well, we are done and I do hope that you found that useful. If you did, pop a comment below, love a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you have enjoyed watching today and I shall see you on the next video.